Madam Chancellor, Lynn Conway is an honorand in today's ceremony. Mary San Severino, Deputy Orator of the University, will present a citation. Madam Chancellor, I have the privilege of speaking about the extraordinary accomplishments of Lynn Conway, brilliant computer scientist and engineer, innovative educator, and advocate for transgender rights. She is a technological revolutionary whose discoveries opened the floodgates of creativity for countless engineers, computer scientists, and entrepreneurs. Professor Conway's ideas are all around us today in our computers, tablets, smartphones, GPS, self-driving car, indeed, almost all modern technology. In 1963, Lynn Conway graduated, uh, did, completed graduate work in electrical engineering and computer science at Columbia University. She was quickly recruited by IBM Research, where she invented a groundbreaking technique which dramatically increased computer performance by arranging and executing instructions far more efficiently. And still, 50 years on, a standard technique in today's computers. Sadly, IBM fired her in 1968 as she underwent gender transition. She had to rebuild her career in stealth with a new name and identity. Starting all over again, Lynn joined Memorex in 1969 and moved to Xerox's Palo Alto Research Center in 73. Silicon Valley in the 70s. What an exhilarating time and place this must have been. Technological innovations coming thick and fast, and Lynn Conway was in the heart of it all. It was becoming clear that methods of digital circuit design, current at the time, could not handle the complexity that new technology would demand. Research into how best to create the microprocessors of the future was needed. And here, Lynn Conway Sean. Um, <clears throat> combining her earlier work at IBM with the latest technologies from Silicon Valley and collaborating with researchers in academia and industry, she launched into hyperdrive. Lynn invented a revolutionary new streamlined methodology for designing very large scale integrated VLSI circuits on tiny silicon chips, and along with Carver Mead, co-authored the foundational engineering text on the subject, Introduction to VLSI Systems. In 1978, Lynn created and taught a wildly successful course at MIT based upon the book. Her new methods allowed silicon chip creators to burst through a log jam of arcane and convoluted methods, releasing a torrent of design creativity. She changed intractable chip creation processes into clean, clear, and concise design methods. Lynn went on to create an internet e-commerce system for rapid silicon chip prototyping. As many graduating here will tell you, today this process is standard. In 1978, it was a game changer. A new paradigm was launched, and the computer chip revolution was off and running. Lynn Conway continued to work in industry, government, and academia, joining the University of Michigan in 1985 as professor of electrical engineering computer science and associate dean of engineering. Just before her retirement in 1999, she faced outing after reports about her early work at IBM began surfacing. As Conway's biography notes, with a growing sense of pride in her accomplishments, she overcame her fears, quietly came out via the internet, and gradually created a major transgender advocacy website. Named in 2014 by Time magazine as one of 25 transgender people who have influenced American culture, 
Lynn Conway and her website, lynnconway.com, provide a beacon of hope and offer tremendous resources for trans people worldwide. Over the years, Lynn has received many major awards. She is a fellow of the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, the IEEE, and a member of the National Academy of Engineering and the Electronic Design Hall of Fame. Her recent Computer History Museum Fellow Award was given in honor of her world-changing accomplishments. And in 2015, she received the prestigious IEEE Royal Society of Edinburgh um, James Clerk Maxwell Medal. In his citation, Barry Shoup, president of IEEE, called Professor Conway a true giant of our age, a revolutionary giant whom we at UVic are proud to celebrate. Madam Chancellor, I have the honor to present Lynn Ann Conway for the degree of Doctor of Engineering Honoris Causa. and we haven't finished yet. Madam Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of this university, I ask you to present to Dr. Lynn Conway the degree of Doctor of Engineering Honoris Causa. By the authority of the Senate of this university, I confer upon you, Lynn Conway, the title and degree of Doctor of Engineering Honoris Causa. Dr. Conway, I now invite you to address the convocation. Madam Chancellor, the leaders, the faculty, the members of the community of the University of Victoria, what a joy it is to join you today on this special ground at this great university. I'm deeply moved to receive this honor and in turn to help you honor and celebrate all the young people receiving their degrees here this day. It's just wonderful to be here with you all in this wonderful celebration. And on nearing Remembrance Day, I'm reminded how appropriate it would be to celebrate, no, to en how appropriate it would be to envision our futures through the words of earlier pathfinders. For example, Winston Churchill gives us a compass for our life journeys when he says, the further backward you can look, the further forward you can see. Reflect on those words. Remembering too, as Steve Jobs says, your time is limited. So don't waste it living someone else's life. 
Grace Hoffer reminds us, a ship in port is safe, but that's not what ships are built for. And the great one, Wayne Gretzky says, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Okay? <laughs> now, as social philosopher Eric Hoffer reflects, in a world of change, the learners shall inherit the earth, while the learned shall find themselves perfectly suited for a world that no longer exists. So do be careful. Don't just build expertise and sit on it as time passes. Remember B.B. King's cool comment. The beautiful thing about learning is nobody can take it away from you. So instead, follow Bob Noyce's advice and go off and do something wonderful. Now, during dangerous passages along the way, be realistically, be realistic yet passionately persistent. As historian and activist Bertha Calloway reminds us, we cannot direct the wind, but we can adjust the sails. In extrema, as gonzo journalist Hunter S. Thompson coolly observes, when the going gets weird, the weird turn pro. <laughs> you can sort of identify with that. <laughs> now that can be wild, but you can get to love it. As Kurt Vonnegut reveals when saying, I want to stay as close to the edge as I can without going over. Out on the edge, you can see all kinds of things you can't see from the center. And as rock climber Lynn Hill observes, when the pursuit of natural harmony is a shared journey, great heights can be attained. Sometimes, I'm going to throw in one of my little quotes, sometimes you can even step across the edge. My own perspective being, if you want to change the future, start living as if you're already there. Poet Mary Oliver poses perhaps the ultimate question for us. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what's it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? During your journey, reflect now and then on the young people who are going to be following you. Eager to learn the ropes, navigate the seas of life, and join you in exploring the future. Think ahead. What words will you leave to guide those young ones and their children and their children's children to help them also go boldly forth, adventure surfing, high atop ever more wondrous waves of human exploration, innovation, and experience? What words? And then I remember the words left by the legendary French aviator and writer, Antoine de saint exupéry If you want to build a ship, don't drum up people and, to, and don't draw up people to collect wood and don't assign them tasks and work, but rather teach them to long for the endless immensity of the sea. So thank you again um, for, for this honor. Uh, I'm, I'm, as you can see, I'm pretty much overwhelmed by this. Uh, it really means more to me than, than you can possibly imagine. And I wish you all good fortune in the adventures ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Conway.